Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, a-hole fired me and ruined his career. The second story, I quit and the company lost a valuable employee. The third story, landlord tries to scam us for $80 for cleaning when we move out, ends up costing him almost $6,000. On to the first story, Pathological a-hole gets what's coming for him. This happened a few years ago, so I feel I'm ready to share it with you guys. Backstory: I was starting my career in security business and had little experience of the field work itself. In my country, private security is highly regulated, important later, and licenses are needed almost every step of the way. I was studying in local security school, from where I would eventually graduate as security supervisor. While studying, I decided to apply for a job in small private security company to get some extra cash. The company mainly handled sport events and concerts. I was one of the almost 100 people working and soon learned that connections you make in the job are most important. Work was good and I had awesome team where we handled security checks and also traffic near the event locations. As I was lacking funds to get pro equipment, I was forced to get used material, workwear, vests, second grade pepper spray, etc. Here's when our scamming pathological liar comes in. Let's call him Sammy. Sam was a bit weird but social character and was, at the time, deemed nice by many in our company. I had made some friends with similar situation in our company, and Sammy soon came to us, promising that he could sell us new sets of vests and equipment with reasonable price. We were stupid to believe him, but we made the deal, as circles in security business were small and bad words spread fast, so we thought that there's no risk. He got the money up front and promised delivery on day X, few weeks from that. Soon he called me and asked that I was interested being a bouncer for a few times in the next week. I said sure as I needed the money. He promised that he would pay me in cash later that month. He also asked that I was interested in working as security in county fair. I said sure, as they are the easiest money there is. I did the bouncer gigs as agreed and later went to county fair. There was other people from our company as well. Sammy was head of security. There I asked about the equipment me and my friends paid for. He said they would arrive next week. Weeks passed. No money from fair and no equipment. He transferred me money from the bouncer gigs, but only half what was promised. When I asked about it, he said there was fee as he was the middleman. He also claimed that county fair had financial issues, so he couldn't pay. Next week he had another explanation. In normal work in sports events, colleagues who had worked with me in the fair had not been paid either and they were suspecting that something was wrong. I was getting worried, so I called the county fair organizers directly, which Sammy had specifically told me not to do as he was taking care of the situation to ask them what's going on. They were baffled. They told me that responsibility of the county fair security was given to voluntary organization of old and retired security officers who worked for community free of charge. It was voluntary non-paid gig. Sammy was volunteering for that organization. He had been given a job to get volunteers to work for the fair and he had thought that I was easier to get them if he paid them. I had lost more than $350 in his shenanigans in a week and I needed that money. I called the organization about the situation and they fired Sammy on the spot from his responsibilities and he was banned from all events they were working on. The security company I worked also had small carrier and hauling business on the side. I applied for that as I had license to drive truck and the boss was understanding that I really needed the job. I hadn't seen Sammy anywhere as he was on leave from security gigs and nobody knew where he was. Also, people were pretty peeved at him after they heard from me what he had done. After two weeks at the truck job, I was asked to come to the office. It turned out that day before I had done my route completely wrong and deliveries had been late too. I was fired on the spot. Leaving the office, Sammy comes from nowhere at the hallway. He stares at me and smiles like the devil himself and says, oh, you lost your job. Well, that happens when you F with the wrong people. I was stunned and didn't know what was happening. Sammy walked to the office behind me and closed the door. Later that day, I learned that he was responsible for the routes and delivery markings and times. He had been hired just a few weeks before me for that job. He got me fired. I quit my job at security company as the boss sided with Sammy. Even he admitted that Sammy was probably guilty of making me fail at the job. I couldn't go to the police as there was literally his word against mine. I was beyond angry and made a silent and holy promise that I would ruin Sammy's life no matter what it takes. Soon I applied for a job in another bigger security company which handled supermarkets, malls, etc. and got the job. Few years passed and I had proven to be trustworthy and hardworking security officer so usually when there was someone new in the job, they were handed to me for training and job introduction. Meet Jay. He came to learn the basics and while I was teaching him, I also asked about his life and everything as we would be working closely together. 
Jay told me everything about his life and mentioned that he was working on side also in security company, named X, and the X was very close name to local well-known security company XX. I thought that he had mispronounced the company name, as he was from the countryside, and his dialect was different from mine. But he insisted that he worked in Company X. I asked who his boss was, and it was Sammy. I realized that years of waiting had paid off, as I knew what Sammy had done. And now, for the revenge. I told Jay everything that had happened between me and Sammy. Jay was shocked but agreed that he had also been suspecting something was a bit off with Sammy. As everything was bureaucratic in my country, there was public record of all security companies. Sammy's company was not a registered company, which is a felony as he doesn't have a license. Jay told me that Sammy had about 15 people working for him and they had a private Facebook site where he was acting as a job agent and handled the workers' salaries. I knew exactly what he was doing. He was fooling them all, that he takes care of their taxes and pension contributions as their employer's duty, but in reality he just took the money for himself and falsified the pay slips. I asked Jay to collect all the evidence he can of Sammy. Jay took pictures, screenshots, and collected statements from his colleagues. Soon Sammy heard about this and fired Jay from his fake company and started to threaten him with lawsuits and that Jay can't ever get a job without Sammy's approval anywhere, which was utter BS. Jay had already got a job in the company I was working in after I gave a good word and vouched for him. I started to piece together the puzzle of Sammy's wrongdoings for my revenge. First, I called to his clients and business associates and presented them with hard rock evidence. One by one, he lost his customers. Then I contacted the police about his tax evasion and false security company. At this point, local IRS was more than interested about Sammy's business. Soon I heard that he had vanished completely from public. Not much later I learned that he was convicted on numerous charges and had to pay thousands in legal fees and fines and receive probation of about a year. He had to hide from the public as he had also lied his education and had scammed numerous people. I started to receive messages in Facebook that his story was spreading like wildfire. I heard that he can't get work from anywhere as his story was shared in my country's biggest private security oriented page in Facebook with more than 80% of all active security officers and bouncers belonging to that group page. The second story is, track me? Sure, I'll comply, but not easy. So my former workplace is trying to get a hold of me, about 1.5 years after I quit. They gave me a job offer that turned out to be a whole other job, bad for them. It seems that they have a problem with Scatter Vicard, the Swedish IRS. It all started one day when the company told me they were installing GNSS tracking in our vehicles. They blamed Scatter Vicket wanting to know that we did not use them when off the clock. Well, that's kind of true, but in fact, Scatter Vicket only wanted to know if we did, and if so, how much. When I pointed this out to my boss, he went on an angry monologue, stating that us low-level workers couldn't be trusted and finished that all we did was trifle away, put our work hours. So the statement from the company that they had no intent to follow us in real time was BS. The problem for the company was that our union had already banned the practice of following us in real time, with a few exceptions. The tracking device installed was easy to Google and thereby even easier to figure out how to manipulate. The biggest concern was it was tamper-proof, so no-no on opening it up. Well, since it used GPS slash GLONASS as the only source for positioning, there was a simple bypass. After speaking to an old colleague of mine from the military, I ordered an antenna for $150, US a Raspberry Pi, got my former colleague to find a good software, and created a .gpx with a track going on every road in Malta. Therefore, I set the device to start via the 12 volts in the car and to simply tell the Shilladed tracker that I was driving around in Malta. The effect didn't take long to show. After a week, the boss told me my vehicle needed service. It did not. I knew when service was due. Another week goes by and it suddenly needs something else I can't remember. Both times, they needed a car to go to another city, even though our regular service station was in our town. After a month, I got another car. The company blamed it on something with the lease. After that, they didn't say anything at all to me about cars or anything else, until the day I quit. Last day there, when dropping off my last things, the boss straight out asked me what I had done, since everyone else's trackers seemed to work properly. I told him I had no idea what he was talking about, went outside and laughed my A off. Leaving the premise, I meet a coworker who's always been really nice to me, so he got the setup from me. Until today, I thought this would be a petty revenge on a company that tried to illegally follow my whereabouts, but apparently they had sent in our tracks to Scatterviquette, and well, they had some questions. Either their records were lies and they needed to go over all the records from the company, or they had to get all the paperwork for doing business abroad in before July. The rumors spread real quick, and now the union also have a couple of questions, somewhere along the lines of, so you can track your workers in real time? We haven't signed off on this. In conclusion, had they only been up front and told everyone what they were planning and got the union in on it, I wouldn't have cared. Now they chose the other way of doing things. The last story is... Scam me for $80 for cleaning on move out? 
I don't think so, Jack. Background. About 10 years ago, my landlord died, or at least the person who owned the place we were renting. The property managers had been delightful, but whoever inherited wanted to sell, so the house was for sale. Enter a Jack A, we'll call him Jack, who decides to buy the place. Now ours was the top floor, i.e. attic converted into a suite, of a house less than 35 square meters, 375 square feet. The bathroom was literally where the stairs up to the top floor used to be. The place was tiny. Jack came to check out the place, as you should before buying a place. He had one of those Bluetooth earpieces in, and I can't even remember if he even acknowledged us. He spent about 30 to 45 seconds in our suite. Next time we hear from him is about a month later. Apparently he'd bought the place. He stops by to give us a notice of rent increase, effective in six months, legal minimum, from $485 to $795. The place is not worth that much. We say nuts to that and decide to buy a house, since what the heck, it's not much more per month. Surprise to anyone who's never bought a house, it was more than just mortgage payments. We give him all the required notice to move out. We move and clean the place up really well. Mind you, when my partner moved in, it was not especially clean, and we happen to have the move-in inspection which mentions this. Jack decides to try to scam us for $80 of our damage deposit for cleaning. He doesn't provide the required forms, just says, I'm going to hold $80 from your damage deposit for cleaning. We respond with, um, no, you're not. Jack, assuming we need the cash for our next damage deposit or bills and we'll settle for anything. Take this or I'm going to keep your whole deposit. Cue revenge. So he decides to just keep the whole deposit. I file paperwork with the rentalsmen, who unsurprisingly after their investigation rule in my favor. He's ordered to refund the whole deposit, but Jack decides not to pay and the rentalsman doesn't have any enforcement powers. So I have to go to the local sheriff's office. They can send a legal demand letter for the deposit plus costs, but it'll cost me $100 to $150. I forget up front. Sure, go ahead. Jack decides to ignore the sheriff's kindly letter. Sheriffs say that they can start proceedings to recover the debt and costs, but I again have to pay up front, about $250 and it might take quite a while. I guess most people quit at this point. Being out of pocket $700, throwing more money at the problem, and maybe having to wait months didn't appeal to them. And there's also a chance you never collect. I chose to pay the sheriffs. They sent another less friendly letter to Jack. But here's the best part. Now that they're recovering a debt, they're going to recover on all the outstanding judgments against him. And apparently he's tried this SH before. They send him another couple of letters. Pay up or else. Jack chose else. Then they seize title to Jack's giant white SUV. I can't remember what it was, but not a cheap one. They didn't physically take it away or anything, but they gave him 30 days to pay all the judgments against him, or they would take it and sell it at auction. Somehow he all of a sudden found the money. My share, $485 plus $150 plus $250 is $885. The other people who had registered judgments, but not paid to start the collections processes, were about $5,000 more. I can't remember how long the whole process took, at least 6 months though. Thank you for listening, see you in the next video.